Well, hello there, YouTube. My name is Tony, and this is Tony Live TV. And in this video, it's going to be like a part two of my Flowtech LLC install of my fuel distributor. Uh, in my previous video, I unboxed the distributor, and we kind of went through it and checked it all out and got ready for an install, and that's what this video is. Uh, I'm trying to keep it short. All I want to do is put this thing together, get it installed. I've already done a video on in the installation part, so this will be a short video. Uh, but we're going to go ahead, get it installed, do a quick test, and try to start this car for the very first time. These are all the parts that you need, or I suggest that you purchase. And these are the part numbers for everything, including the fuel filter. You need uh, two 8x12 by, by 1 millimeter and two 12x17 by, by 1.5 millimeter. This is the sealing ring for the bottom of the fuel distributor. I suggest that you change that. These are the tools you're going to need to install the fuel distributor, or at least the tools I chose to use. This is an 8 millimeter socket, and that's to take off the little fuel lines, and a 12 millimeter open end. I prefer these flare nut ones, so I'm going to use both of these because you have to hold one side of the fitting and then tighten it with the other one. Same thing with the 17 millimeter ones. You're going to need both. And then to attach the fuel lines to the vehicle, you're going to need this five millimeter hex. The fuel filter side and the return side is 17 millimeters. The 12 millimeter is for the cold start valve and for the differential pressure port. And this little plastic tool is just a little tool that I use to help me put on that O-ring on the bottom. I have already done a video on installing that sealing ring, as well as setting the depth of the piston and all that. As a matter of fact, you know, I'm going to put that link down below and I'm going to save you guys a bunch of time, but these are the tools you need. If you've already seen that, then you're ready to go. So I suggest that you just go and check out that video if you want really good detailed information on the entire process of installing the fuel distributor onto the vehicle. I've completely installed the fuel distributor, but I left out all the ports. And we're going to energize this system with this. That's in that other video. It shows you how I did this and how I hooked it all up so I can stand here and look at it. I'm not energizing anything in here. So if fuel pops out, I'm fairly safe, I hope. So all I need to do is energize it. I'm hearing it, and it's going back to the fuel tank. Perfect. Perfect. That is perfect. And you notice those other jets have a little bit of fuel in it this time, where it didn't before. Perfect. I did hear something, though, you guys. This right here was leaking, and that's fault of my own. I actually did not tighten that. <laughs> you remember earlier I said you needed a 12 millimeter to do the, the one going to the cold start, and then for that differential test port, you know, on the other side? But I forgot for the fuel pressure regulator. So that's all I actually have to do is just snug that thing up. All right, now that it's all tightened up, let's go ahead and test it. Make sure that what we did was good. There we are, we're fully charged and we're not leaking out of the ports. Good news. I'm gonna listen and investigate for any leaks now that we're fully pressurized. That's the only place I could find any sign of leak. I look back there at the return line on the on the fuel line don't going into the tank, all around the fuel pumps, all that stuff going all the way up to here. So that's it, just that one. It's been sitting now for about 20 minutes and I'm making sure that you know there's no leaks, it's holding pressure, everything's great. Now I want to re-energize it now that I've got everything tight. You can hear it. Okay. And everything is looking great. I hear no hissing anywhere. We're completely charged. 
I finished installing all the injector lines and everything's tight. There are no leaks. And in the box that came with my fuel distributor rebuilt by Flowtech, came with instructions that said that I need to have between one and three millimeters of free play on this plate. Now I realize this is nowhere near one to three millimeters of free play, but there is free play. And that's the reason why it didn't leak out of the top of the fuel distributor. All right, we had enough free play to where it was not hitting that piston. Um, so if anything, it would be rich right now if I tried to attempt to start the vehicle. And that's what I suggest you do before you start turning the mixture screw and adjusting this plate. Um, there's a, other ways to play with that plate. I'd like, if we're lucky and we can just get it started right now, then we'll talk about adjusting that CO screw. It's time for the first start. Before I did a first start, you know, I was setting up all these different cameras, obviously. And when I was setting up these cameras, I was thinking to myself, this is the first time I'm going to possibly start it in 16 years, because this is attempt number two. It did start on attempt number one. It just didn't run, right? And then we investigated it and figured out what was wrong, at least up to this point. So now we're going to deliver fuel to this engine for the first time in 16 years. I just want to say thanks, you know, to everybody. And I, I keep forgetting that in all my videos. I even write it down. Don't forget this, you know, don't forget, Tony. Thank your subscribers because, you know, you guys have helped me, really. You, you've inspired me enough to get to this point. Which brings me to who inspired me the most? Tassos. You guys, I have a whole, I have a list. It's not like a million sites or a, a channels on YouTube. Um, but I have a list of channels that I have that I have followed along my entire journey. And these people have all helped me. Tassos, you know, he, he not only has helped me, but he inspires me. He should inspire you guys too. I think now's the time. I have the, the key in the ignition right down there. So I don't know what view is going to be the best. I think this one kind of looks cool because you can see the little baffle plate and all that kind of stuff in there. Okay, Jen, turn on the exhaust fan. I built that little exhaust system. It's just an air duct fan. And I attach it to the exhaust so I can start this up in the garage. All right, so we are ready. All right, we are energized. <laughs> Nothing yet. Let's try it again. <laughs> Nothing. Sounds like we're in worse shape than we were, because I can't even get it to start now. You know, that doesn't sound like fuel starvation to me. There's something else wrong. I, it, I, I can actually just get a faint smell of fuel. So, and, and I'm telling you, I know it's getting fuel. I think everything Flowtech did is fine. Uh, I've got something else going on. I need, to, I need to check this before I keep on cranking this. Well, I was right. It's not a fuel delivery problem. And I'm glad I stopped cranking on it because we've got plenty of fuel. Uh, we don't have spark, or I don't have spark. Uh, your guys are going to uh, go on a journey with me on discovering why we don't have a spark. So this is really bad for me because it could get expensive, but it's good for you. And the reason I say it's good for you is because I've already done a diagnostic video. I called it your engine won't start or something that, you know, step by step. Uh, but that was just on the fuel part of it, right? <laughs> so we've solved those issues as far as I can tell. I think we're getting plenty of fuel. Um, I can smell it. Uh, so that's why I stopped immediately. It didn't sound the same. You know, I should have gotten a little bit of something, right? It might have run rich, uh, like I said, but it, it should have started. And so I pulled the plug wire, and sure enough, that's what was the issue. I had no spark here. 
And then I went back and I tested to see if I have any spark coming into the distributor cap and I've got no spark there either. So I either probably have an EZL problem or possibly a uh, coil issue or something like that, some other kind of wiring or whatever it is, that's what a future video is going to be. So if you want to support me, because <laughs> like I said, this could cost, this could get expensive. You know, what's an EZL cost? About 500 bucks? So, you know, about 150 or something like that for just the, the, the coil. And that's just those things. So, yeah, it can get expensive, but I'm going to share the videos like I do everything, step by step, every single diagnosis. How do I diagnose where it is? You know, I've already opened up the port. Yeah, there's a little port where you can put in your probe and there's some settings you can put on your multimeter and there's a lot of things we can test right there. And I already did some of that, but obviously it's going to be in another video because I have not discovered exactly what the problem is yet. So unfortunate for me, great for you. There'll be another video that will solve that. And yeah, it's going to start. It's going to start. I have fuel. I know I have fuel and I, I, have, I have vacuum, which means I have oxygen, right? I have oxygen and fuel. The only thing I don't have right now is this. You know, so I mean, should I go over there with a nine volt battery and see if I can get this thing going? <laughs> I think I'm just going to have to cut the video now. It's not that long of a video and I appreciate you guys supporting me and everything. Yeah, there's all kinds of ways you can support me. Obviously subscribing to the channel, you know, the bells, uh, you know, click and subscribe. And it takes me a long time too, right? Because I have several cameras and I want to give you guys the best angle for every single step that I do. So it takes me like 10 times longer to do a video than it should. <laughs> but I, again, I thank you guys for all the support and um, I'll just catch you guys on the next one.